is selling a ton of chips. We got more Switch 2 details, more details on uh, the tariffs that are incoming, and the perfect AMD card. GRE. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, April 4th, 2025. As a reminder, at 3 p.m. Eastern today, we are going to be drawing the winner for the 9800 X3D RTX 5080 gaming PC. And then at that point, we'll talk about the next PC giveaway for the month of April slash May, which will be an RTX 5090 PC. So you can come check us out over on twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech to find out about all of that. But I'm not the only person who's building a 9800X3D PC. Based on a compilation of Amazon sales data for March, most people are buying AMD CPUs. Most people are building with those. 80% of Amazon sales were going to Team Red with the most popular Intel CPU being the Intel Core i5-12400F, then the 12700K, then the 14900K, then the 12900K, then the 12600KF, then the 12900KF, and then Finally, you see their first Core Ultra 7 265K with no other Core Ultras being on there. It looks like that Core Ultra is selling within the region of the Ryzen 5 8500G and the Ryzen 5 5600 GT. People who aren't buying graphics cards, that's kind of the same ballpark region of who is purchasing these chips. But you can just see that the top three models are all AMD chips. The 9800X3D being number one, the 7800X3D being number two, the 50 500, which is such a weird chip because it's not very good for being a Ryzen 5000 series CPU is for some reason in second place, 5600X coming in in fifth place. But it looks like the Ryzen 9000 series is selling pretty well as of March, the Core Ultra series not selling well at all. Uh, it doesn't look to be very good for Team Blue. It looks like it's all Team Red at this point. But you know who's seeing green? Nvidia, because that's their color, but also Nintendo, because they're going to be raking in a ton of revenue when it comes to the Switch 2. It's high price, it's high game tags, it's just going to be a lot of cash flow coming in. But we got tech details on the Nintendo Switch 2. Not a lot, it's not as nitty gritty as hardware enthusiasts like to see, but both Nintendo as well as Nvidia came out discussing some of the details surrounding the Switch 2, such as the fact that it is 10 times more powerful than the original Switch, or 10 times the graphics performance. Now, this is NVIDIA saying this. They put this in a blog post. And from what we know, NVIDIA somehow gets comparisons really weirdly done, like the RTX 5070 equaling a 4090. That could be going on here, especially because they talk about how it does have ray tracing cores for real-time ray tracing, lighting shadows, all that. But it also has tensor cores that support DLSS, or deep learning super sampling. So how much of that 10X graphical performance is being accounted for in the tensor up tracing, where it's actually gonna be the frame rates based on the fake AI generation. There was no confirmation about whether or not these have any sort of uh, single or multi-frame gen. I'm not necessarily speculating that, but especially if you're running DLSS performance mode and you get faster FPS and then you include that in the 10X multiplier, it does also seem a little hollow when it comes to all of that. But some of the cool things such as G-Sync coming to the Nintendo Switch 2 with variable refresh rate being supported. In that, additionally, it's gonna have AI powered face tracking and background removal for video chats if you get that little camera accessory that they announced. It's some neat details, right? DLSS helping to output at 4K when you have uh, it hooked up to a dock is gonna be slightly better than not having it. So I'm not necessarily against any of this, but Nintendo doesn't share a whole lot when it comes to the specific details that we like to know. Nvidia might give us more later on down the line. We kind of have speculation of knowing what the details are with it being based on the Ampere architecture, which is RTX 30 series. We don't know exactly what it's comparable to, but those are the details. However, a lot of tech outlets did get to have a hands-on time with the Switch 2 yesterday, and a lot of them have very positive things to say about it. The biggest downfall, is the price, but there are improvements. The ergonomics still feel really good. The performance is there. The HDR brightness is nice, even if it's not OLED and it has great color contrast. There's things to enjoy about it. It's just that that price is rough. Obviously 450 bucks is a lot for what people consider a cheaper console. However, if you just look at inflation, it's not 
that far outpacing inflation with it being $300 to launch the regular Switch in 2017. That's almost 400 bucks in today's dollars. So it's about $70 overpriced from where it originally was. But considering the longevity that the console had, I think a lot of people are going to spend the money on this console and it's gonna be incredibly well selling. I don't think $450 is gonna deter that many people from Nintendo having to rethink their pricing strategy here. But let me know what you think of it. Obviously, there's a lot of negativity around the price increase, but I am curious, were you thinking of getting one before the price announcement and now does that sway you at all? I, I'm not necessarily looking to hear from people who are never gonna buy one in the first place, but let me know what you think down below in the comments. Well, I let you know that the competitor to Elon Musk SpaceX Starlink is going to be launching next week with April 9th being the launch date of 27 satellites that are going up for Amazon's Project Kuiper Internet. So it's basically the same idea as satellite provided internet with different terminals or home base stations that users can have with the smallest one being smaller than Starlink's mini setup can get you about 100 megabits per second when it comes to data or you can get larger dishes that can go up to a gigabit per second and that they should be under $400 for the terminal. This could potentially be good for people who are looking for options when it comes to remote data connection. I know that uh, when it comes to um, doing potentially upcoming charity streams in South Africa, having an alternative to Starlink, which is not officially allowed to be sold in South Africa, uh, could potentially be good, but I don't know that Amazon's gonna go with the necessities to get it, it Project Kuiper in that country either. So we'll have to see how all of that plays out. And we'll have to see if Reese has internet today, right? Maybe he does need some Project Kuiper because his fiber got taken out for his suburb. He has power, he just, he, he lost internet. It's kind of stinky situation. Let's see if he has deals. Yo, welcome back. TFT deals bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet and it's only been a little bit of time but I missed you guys and I've got some deals to send you off into the weekend with starting off with the neat Bumblebee 2 USB condenser microphone which you can grab for only $16.99 making it $83 off but the next up we have the iProta 18.5 inch 1080p 120hz portable monitor which you can grab for only $96.99 making it $63 off and then lastly today we have the Sennheiser HD 599 wired open back headphones which you can grab for only $143 dollars and 99 cents making it 55 dollars and 99 cents off if you're a fan of the retro brown and ivory colorway we're a big fan of sennheiser in this household and hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to bread for the rest of your hard news Cheers. Well, Reese, uh, deals are going to get a little harder or easier because if the prices are higher and then they come down a smidge, then it's a good deal. Anyways, the tariffs that hit because of President Trump's Liberation Day, reciprocal tariffs that are going out to a bunch of different countries at a various amount of percentage points. A lot of people were upset at the fact that China was getting hit with a 34% tariff. Taiwan was getting hit with a 32% tariff. However, when it comes to PC parts, one of the notable exceptions that happened with these Taiwanese tariffs and Chinese tariffs is that semiconductors are actually excluded from that list. So semiconductors being involved in the CPUs, the GPUs, the actual components of the things that make a computer think should be unaffected. However, that doesn't mean that PC components overall are gonna be unaffected because things such as the materials that go into producing the chips are going to be hit. So things such as the semiconductor assembly stuff, as well as aluminum and all of the different materials that could potentially be used in them, those could potentially be hit with tariffs. And then additionally, one of the difficulties that people were seeing was that Vietnam was hit with a 46% tariff. And after the first administration of Trump's presidency went after China with tariffs, a lot of companies started moving their packaging and manufacturing facilities to Vietnam in order to avoid these tariffs. And now they are going to get hit by those, specifically with things like the Nintendo Switch, they move some of their packaging facilities to Vietnam as well as various other companies. So it's not quite clear how this is gonna play out, but it is likely that prices are going to increase. And a Reuters correspondent did indicate that the reason semiconductors have been excluded is because there are other tariffs coming for semiconductors. It's part of a different sector. And so they're gonna address those specifically, but not the actual overall Liberation Day tariffs that happened. So just, we'll keep you 
updated on everything that's going on, but prices likely to increase all across the board for nearly every component. It's not just gonna be graphics cards and CPUs that are gonna go up. Cases are likely to end up costing more. PCs in general likely to get even more expensive. So we'll see how well uh, gamers are able to play on PC moving forward. But hopefully AMD is able to launch their 9070 GRE at a reasonable price because that is the newest GPU that's being reported to come out. The Great Radeon Edition, which is now officially what GRE stands for, is likely going to make its debut later this year. So expected to be between the RX 9070 and the RX 9060 XT, hitting that sweet middle spot of the most affordable levels of GPUs. But it is going to have less VRAM than I think a lot of people get excited for. Currently, it's being quoted to have about 12 gigabytes of GDDR6. And the price speculation that's happening right now is that it should be right around $450 with the 9060 XT coming in at $350. Obviously, this is supposed MSRP, and this is supposed before tariffs. It could potentially happen that companies like NVIDIA and AMD come out and say, we're reworking MSRP. This is gonna be the new default price. And so the 9070 GRE actually comes in at 549 because the 9070 got shifted up to 649. That could happen. That might be bad PR. We'll see if any of that plays out, but a 9070 or GRE could be a great seller just like the 7900 GRE was. It was very close to the 7900 XT and it was at such a discount that it was a very, very sensible GPU to pick up. I'm hoping that we get that with the 9070 GRE and at 400, 450 bucks getting 12 gigs of VRAM, maybe that's an easier pill to swallow than uh, NVIDIA's 5070 giving you that for 550 minimum. And you guys left a minimum amount of comments in yesterday's episode of Hot News. You left a normal amount of comments. I, I didn't mean to denigrate it. I'm sorry for making it seem like I was being deconstructive of your, I like when you guys talk in the, in the comments. So just, sorry. We got Tycho saying, bruh, with Nvidia Ignition and AMD's discharge, I believe if they work together, they can form a fire nation. Excellent comment. Very witty. I like it a lot. And then we got Eric saying, I found that this is an unfortunate side effect of keeping up with tech news. The odds of your system having a catastrophic failure is extremely low, but we keep hearing about it. So it causes undue anxiety sometimes. It's still good to be aware of the issues though. So I'm not saying we shouldn't talk about it. I hear you. I mean, just to get a little uh, existential metaphysical for a second, I think this is kind of true of nearly all news cycles, right? Like there is a certain extent to which things are being discussed that you have no direct effect over. So you just have this underlying burden of carrying this idea with you, even though number one, you can't practically do anything to stop it or change it. And number two, uh, it, it doesn't actually add value to your life to worry about it. So that obviously can happen in the tech sector. I mean, I try not to be doomsday, doom and gloom. Here's all the terrible things that happen. I just try to discuss the things that both I care about and I think that the audience will care about as well. I try to communicate that you shouldn't be worried about specific things. The 9070 XT uh, issue probably shouldn't be something you should worry about. But also know that if your 9800 X 3D PC stops working one day, maybe take it out of the motherboard socket, see if it popped. There, there is a point where becoming informed is just undue burden on your life and extra stress than you need it to be. And if you need to stop watching hot news for that reason, I say go for it. I mean, to some extent, if you need to stop consuming, a bunch of information for that. I, I'm in full support of that. Being in control of your ability to uh, live your life is more important to me than uh, you knowing about all of the goings on with PCs. That's just how I parse it. I try to only take in information where either I know I can have a direct impact or it's gonna directly impact my life or you know it directly impacts my loved ones. There's just so much information out there right now that you cannot uh, take in all of it, nor can you care about all of it. So I, I think energy is best spent where you uh, you can care and you can have a direct impact. You know, that's not fully prescriptive. There are events where you wanna care about things that aren't directly impacting you. So like, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, nor am I trying to tell you how to live your life. I'm just trying to have some thoughts and I think they got away from me. And GP Turismo saying $450 for the Switch 2, $80 for games. I'll stick with my Steam Deck and look at other Steam OS handhelds. Nintendo jumped the shark here for me. Most kids I know prefer phone slash 
Tabbit, so I feel this might be another Wii U situation. I, I just gotta disagree. I don't think the Switch 2 is gonna be another Wii U situation. I think the Switch 2 is gonna crush it. I don't think the price tag is gonna be very high for parents um, who are potentially buying this for their kids. The pricing on games, I think, is the harder pill to swallow here. However, one of the arguments that I've been seeing is I'm gonna stick to PC or I'm gonna stick to XYZ console. I think we're all just kidding ourselves if we think that this isn't just gonna change the industry completely. $80 games will likely become standard everywhere. We're looking at a uh, Mario Kart costing 80 bucks. We're looking at allegedly Grand Theft Auto 6 costing $100. This is just going to reshape how much video games cost. Game developers have been talking for years about how game prices have one, not kept pace with inflation and two, not kept pace with the scale of video game development. So in order for them to uh, keep up with that, they kind of have to wait for a first mover like this, like Nintendo, raising the bar for how much things are going to cost for them to do it. We will likely see most AAA games follow suit, if I had to guess. And we'll likely see, you know, indie games will still stay in that $20 to $50 region, but AAA games are likely going to get more expensive regardless of the platform that you're on. Nintendo is just changing the industry for all of us. If people will pay $80 for Mario Kart, I, I don't see a reason why From Software wouldn't charge $80 for Elden Ring 3. If consumers will show that they will pay for it on one platform, I just see it happening everywhere. And I don't see me happening in hot news right now. Just as a little update, we will not be having hot news on Tuesday just because I will be in the hospital with my son. So that's going to be postponed, but we should have uh, we have an LG Gram video going live tomorrow. We should have the 9070 XT review going live on Sunday. And then hopefully we can get um, our ROG Flow 13 video out Monday or Tuesday. I would like to I would like to get that out in place of hot news. We'll see if that can happen. Anyways, I'll uh, be back when I'm back.